guys, welcome to the Smart Student channel. My name is Chelsea, if it's the first time we're meeting. I'm going to change directions just a little bit from what I traditionally talk about because I think it's time to officially cover MLA formatting for all of you that have been asking. So here's the thing. MLA in April of 2021 switched over from their 8th edition to their 9th edition. And I'll say right from the start that most things translated over, there are just a few minor differences, but I do think it's time to officially cover MLA on my channel. So today we're going to start with how to set up your papers. So the basic formatting, all that good stuff. And over the next two weeks, be sure to look for a video on in-text citations and then how to create the works cited page and references in MLA. Now, the last thing that you need to know before we get started in my computer is that there is a PDF version of the MLA 9th edition handbook that's available online. I'm going to link that down below in the description. I highly recommend downloading it and saving it on your computer if MLA is your primary form of formatting for your academic papers. But with no further ado, let's get this started. And here we are. Welcome to my computer. What are you looking at? All right, so on the left-hand side of this screen, what I've done is created an example template for you to reference while I'm explaining setting up this blank document over here. So the first thing I wanna note is that this example, I'm gonna show you how to create an MLA paper formatted with a heading versus a title page. The reason I'm doing this is because most MLA documents only require a heading. If you want me to cover creating an MLA formatted title page, comment down below, let me know, and if I get enough people, I will make that video. But coming over here to my blank document, the first thing we're gonna do is set up the general formatting. So we're gonna talk about margins, the line spacing, and your font size and type. Let's go ahead and start with those margins. So for MLA 9th edition, they ask that you include a one inch border around all four edges of your paper. Now, the good news is this is generally the default, whether you're using Microsoft Word or Google Docs. But if you want to check, what you would do is come up here to Layout, and then you want to select the Margins drop-down menu and ensure that Normal is selected. As you can see, that's a one-inch border around all four edges. Also, I want to note that if you see 2.54, that is the center centimeter translation of one inch. So if you see that, you're fine. But we have our normal selected, we're good. Let's go ahead and go back to the Home tab. Now, let's go ahead and set our line spacing. So you want to make sure that your entire document is double spaced. As you can see here, everything is double spaced no matter what. There are no extra spaces added. So let's go ahead and do that. What you want to do is come up here to the toolbar, select the paragraph drop-down menu, and from here you want to select the line spacing options. We're going to change ours from 1 to 2.0. And by the way, if your Word document looks a little different, it's simply because I have mine brought into half my page. So you may be able to go straight up to the line spacing and select it just like that. Just keep that in mind. If anything looks a little different, it might just be because my screen is smaller. But let's go ahead and move on to your font size and type. And so first and foremost, I want to say that there is no designated font size or type set in the MLA handbook. What they recommend is that you want a font type that is legible and then the size, you want it to be between 11 and 13. Quite frankly, 12 point times New Roman is usually recommended. It's a very universally accepted font size and type. So I recommend going with that. To change your font size and type, again, come up here to the toolbar. We're gonna change from Calibri down to Times New Roman. It's already size 12, so we're good here. But now that our general formatting is set up, let's go ahead and move on to the running head, which as you can see, it's located in the right-hand corner of my paper. And also, if you'll note, what's included is your last name followed by the page number. So let's go ahead and set this up. In your Blake document, I recommend coming up here to the header ribbon and go ahead and double click. This is gonna prompt you for the layout option where you can insert your header. What you wanna do is select page number, go ahead and select page number from the drop down menu, and then you wanna ensure that the alignment is on the right. So from here, I'm gonna click OK. Note how the number one is now in the right hand corner. Good. We just need to add our last name, which you can actually double click on the number one. Note how it's highlighted. You wanna make sure your cursor is on the left-hand side of the number, and then go ahead and type out your last name. Include one space to separate the two, 
And now the last note I want to make here is that oftentimes the font size and type will change back to the default of what your Word document was originally. So you want to make sure that it's under the font size and type that you chose. So I'm going to change this to Times New Roman. We're under a 12. We're good to go now. Now I can simply double click anywhere on my blank document and my running head is set. But now let's go ahead and move on to creating the title of your paper. And that just refers to these four elements you're asked to include before you start your paper. And that is your name, your professor's name, your course information, and the date. So coming over here to the blank document, and mind you, I've just zoomed in a little bit, that's all. That's why it looks different. You want to start on the first blank line. In other words, this is going to be one inch from the top of your paper. You're going to start with your name. Go ahead and include it with your first, middle initial, and last name just like this. Great. After you've included your name, go ahead and hit enter one time to start your professor's element on its own blank line. Now, I would like to note how you want to include the title as your professor refers to themselves. So if they refer to themselves as a professor or a doctor, or they don't use any of those titles, you want to include it the way they do. So in this case, this professor uses professor, so that's what I'm going to include. Now we want to move on to our course information. Again, go ahead and hit enter one more time, starting this on its own line. Here, you want to include the course name and the number. So for this course, let's say we were taking humanities and the course number was 341. It would look just as you see it here. Now the fourth and final element in your title is the date. So go ahead and start on a new line just like before. And for the date formatting, you wanna use the European style. This is what MLA formatting recommends. And so that simply means that you're going to include the day first, followed by the month and the year, and you're not gonna separate any of those elements with commas. So this paper is due on the 15th of October. I would type it out just like that, but you would do a better job of typing October than I did. Okay, struggle bus. And then 2021, because that's when this paper is due. But just like that, the title of our paper is correctly set up in MLA formatting. We can move on to the next portion. Now we're gonna move on to creating the title of our paper. So to format it, you wanna hit enter once from the date element align your text in the center of your page just like this and then you go ahead and type out your title i'm going to make a few notes about the title before i type ours out all right so first and foremost you want to use capital case and that all major words are capitalized like you see they are here you want to avoid any fanciful type of formatting such as italicizing or boldface font however you would italicize your title if it would be italicized in the text However, you would italicize words in your title only if they would be correctly italicized in your text. Please note how there's no punctuation after the title. And the last note I want to make is that sometimes writing the title after you've written your paper is okay. Because after you've written your entire paper, you know exactly what it's about because your title should be a nice, short, concise, but accurate summary or description, if you will, not a summary, it's a description of what your paper is about. So just keep that in mind that you may type out a title to start and then realize that you want to change it later on. That's completely fine and acceptable. But I went ahead and zoomed back out because now we're going to talk about the main body of our paper. So to start, you want to hit enter one time from your title and then go ahead and realign your text flush left just like that. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the information in here and we're going to discuss it as we go through it. So the first note that I want to make is that all of your paragraphs should be indented inward one half inch just like that. You can indent by using the tab key from your keyboard the first time and every subsequent paragraph afterwards will automatically indent on its own. So the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to your main body is the use of headings and subheadings. So right away, I'm gonna say that MLA is not like APA formatting in that headings are the bread and butter of your paper. If anything, what MLA says is that headings and subheadings in your research projects and such, they can help organize and structure your writing, but you should avoid overusing them. So in other words, they should never be used to overcompensate for poor structure or explain an underdeveloped idea they only should be used when they're absolutely necessary. 
Now, another rule that they have that's different is that no internal heading level should only have one instance. So what that means in plain English is simply that if you use a level one heading, you must use at least another level one. And if I use a level one and a level two, I wanna make sure also to use a second level two as well. You don't wanna just have one level two and that's it throughout your paper. They want at least two instances of each level of heading that you use. Next, let's talk about the formatting. So I like to teach students to think of headings as following the same or similar formatting principles as the title of your paper. So please note that it uses capital case. There is no punctuation. You don't wanna use numbers in your headings. Now the difference is, is they are gonna be aligned flush left. You can see this one's bolded. And that brings me to a good point of how to format the letters of your headings. And there is a bit of flexibility. MLA does not have stringent guidelines on exactly what a level one, level two, and three, so on down the line should look like. If anything, what they want you to do is ensure prominence in your level one and level two, such as level one may be a larger font than your level two or your level two may use italics or not be bolded to signal subordination. So for example, I have two in this paper. This is my first one, it's a level one, so I would make sure to use another level one at least somewhere in this paper. This is a short paper, so I don't have many. But let's say this were a level one and this is actually a level two. This is not the conclusion of the paper. This is example heading two. To show that it is number two, what I might do is simply unbold it. Or if that doesn't look prominent enough, I'll leave the bold, but I'll italicize it. Or maybe I'll even decrease the font a little bit. That's a little too much, but you get my drift. You just want it to look subordinate to the level one. So maybe that would suffice. I could even undo the italic italics. And as you can see, we have level one, level two. But I'm gonna go ahead and undo all those changes. And we're gonna say this paper only used up to level one section headings. But now let's move on to the next point I'd like to address, and that is these highlighted portions here, which are your in-text citations. So first and foremost, your in-text citations should correspond with the full work cited list at the end of your paper. We're gonna get into this later. But for now, let's focus on these in-text citations. And mind you, I have a full other video explaining this in detail Simply right now is going to be very basic because for time purposes, I don't want to take up too much of your time. But for MLA 9th edition, what they use is a two element formatting pattern in that they include the author's last name followed by the page number. Please note how there's one space between the two elements. They're enclosed in parentheses and the punctuation comes after the second parenthesis. Now, I'm not going to go through all these examples. Like I said, I have a video for that, but I will make one note that when it comes to in-text citations, there are two formatting patterns you can choose from and that you can use a parenthetical like you see it is here or a narrative where the author element is worked into the wording of the sentence. Again, go ahead and check out that other video because I'm going to move on to the work cited page. All right, so here's the example completed. And so I want to back up just a little bit. So let's say this is the end of your paper. You're finished. You're ready to start your works cited page. Well, actually, you're going to be creating your works cited as you're writing your paper, but you're ready to format it. So what I recommend doing first and foremost is go ahead and insert a page break after the last portion in your text. And so when you're starting out, that's probably going to be up here when you create your title, you'll insert your page break here. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna go ahead and insert it at the end of the text. You're gonna come up here to the toolbar, select insert. From this pages dropdown menu, you want to insert a blank page. This way, it'll bring you to the next blank page in your document. From here, you can start your works cited page. What you want to do is you want to type out the word works cited like you see it is here, not in bold font. It is going to be unbolded and you're going to capitalize both words. Also take note how the text is centered. 
then you can include all of your reference list entries underneath that. Now, it's important to note that your reference list entries follow a hanging indent format. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. I have just a couple other notes I wanna make about your reference list. So something that's worth mentioning, although most of you probably already understand this, it's that any information you include in the main body of your paper you must include the full reference list entry down here on the Works Cited page, as well as that corresponding in-text citation. And so that's exactly what we've done here. Obviously, there are a lot more references than what this example had, but let's go ahead and set the hanging indent. So what I recommend, the easiest way to do this is to highlight all of your text just like that. Note how Works Cited is not highlighted. And then we're gonna use the icon from the ruler toolbar. What you wanna do is you wanna grab the bottom carrot, the left margin indent, and simply slide it inward one half inch. If you'll note, that's all I needed to do because my hanging indent is set. Yes, I do know that there is a way to set your hanging indent under paragraph, but I like to teach students specifically to use the ruler because this comes in handy with being able to manipulate your document with full flexibility or full control over it. This comes in handy when you're writing assignments like an annotated bibliography and so on and so forth. And sometimes you'll see your alignment out of order and you don't know why. If you know how to use the ruler, you're fine. And that's gonna be all for today's video. I hope that helped you with the basic formatting of MLA 9th edition. Remember, over the next two weeks, we're gonna cover work cited and in-text citations for MLA as well. But in the meantime, you guys go enjoy your day and I'm gonna get back to work. I'll see you in the next video.